All right, I'm gonna clap, introduce you, and then we're gonna go. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Smoky Mirror Podcast. I am here with a friend of my sister's. They go to Harvard University. Her name is Abby, straight out of Nigeria, super lit. I really appreciate her energy and I appreciate her time. So Abby, thank you for coming on the podcast. Can you just tell people just a little bit of like background on you, like what you got going on, where you're from, et cetera? Right. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, like you said, my name is Abby. I'm a junior at Harvard. Um, I'm in Nigeria right now with my parents. I study art. Um, Career-wise, I'm doing like finance stuff. And I appear to have a lot of opinions. So that's probably why I'm here. <laughs> nice. Let's talk about what you, you were on Instagram talking about. So um, I guess the, I'm going to try to tee it up for you. So I guess the, the, the issue in question is, okay, this guy, a man has a relationship with a woman, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe married, I don't know. And then he's been DMing, you know, he might, he might DM other single girls, you know, like trying to get at them, saying reckless things, I'm sure, while the, you know, he has a whole woman. And so the problem is, is what? And where does the issue come in? Yeah, I guess I put on my story and I was asking, generally speaking, like, when do people think is the right time and the thing is, I realize when I say things that everything has nuance. So I'm always open to like hearing other people's opinions and stuff. Because mm -hmm. even personally, I never really know what to do. Like I know I would, what I would like to do. And I know what I would have instinctively done if it was me. But then anytime I get a second opinion from other people, it's usually like they don't agree. So it's just like a curious talking point. But I guess I was like, yeah, like when, because we see it all the time. Like you're in college, you know, the girl and the guy like it's a small black community especially at harvard mm -hmm. um and people are cheating like people are cheating out here and you'll know that they're cheating or you'll know of it but maybe you're not like close to the girl or maybe this girl doesn't even go here so she's like from their home state um or just like different situations where it's like when am i when should i say something like i don't know this girl at all maybe i don't even really know the guy and so there's like so many different angles and I think so many times, like people are like, I'd rather just stay out of everyone's business, which to me, like, feels wrong. Like, mm. I see everyone's point because it's not your business. But at the same time, it's like, how are you just going to walk around and like, let someone do someone dirty like that? Right. So it's just like really awkward. And I know when it happened to me that made me think, question it the most, it was like, it wasn't even, it was like, you're having this conversation. You're thinking like, oh, I've made a friend. And me personally, I don't even like making guy friends. So that's like <laughs> a whole separate issue. But I was like, okay, like this person seems friendly, like whatever. And then, you know, you're even talking about the girlfriend because you're thinking it's friendly. And then when it gets weird, you're like, how do I like back out of this? Should Define I say something? Define getting weird. Like, Cause I don't know if everybody knows. Like, what just like when you can tell someone is like, steering the conversation in a certain direction on purpose or like trying to hint at you helping them steer the conversation in a way but also being very strategic so they don't actually like leave any tracks of like I told you to do this or I asked mm -hmm. you to send me this so it's very just like first of all what are you doing and, and do I say something about that especially if you're if they're like really crafty because some people aren't crafty and then at that point it's like I don't know but maybe that was like my particular situation that was weird um How'd you handle but, it? How did you handle that? Well, the thing is, like, I was, like, not friends with the girl, but I obviously knew of the girl, but mm -hmm. I wasn't, like, close to her. So I just, like, would stop talking to the person. Like, I would just not answer anymore. So if it was anything but friendly, I would stop answering and, like, I would stop reaching out. And so, like, months at a time would go by and we would I wouldn't talk to this person because every time you would give them a chance, like, oh, well, they're so, like, fun to talk to then they get weird. So I was just like, okay, I just won't talk to you. So that was like my solution. But you didn't bring it Because you were saying your solution was like, I'm going to DM the significant other and be like, tell your person to leave me alone. Yeah. Which is which is so funny because I've literally never heard anyone suggest it in that <laughs> particular manner. Like I've heard people be like, oh yeah, like, hey, just wanted to let you know they're doing this. So to be like making demands when they don't even know what their partner is doing is just like hilarious to me. But yeah, because yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, 
you know the girl, you know the guy, you know the guy's on some bullshit. I wouldn't, instead of just not responding, I would have been like, hey girl, your your man's like kind of weird. Like, what's up with that? Like, maybe, maybe if, is, if, if it was anyone, if it, it was, if it was anyone that I felt I was close to, then obviously I wouldn't, you know what I mean? I would obviously say something right. to them because because there are people that have close friends and they're not brutally honest with their close friends. And I guess mm. like brutally honest is bad. Like, I don't think you need to be brutal. You can just be honest. But there are people that have friendships that are not, even their closest friendships are not on a level where they can be genuine about stuff like that. Whereas for me, like me and my friends are always like dragging each other and giving like our upfront opinions about things. So if it was one of them, the level of disgust that would immediately just like I'd be snitching on everybody, but it's like I don't even barely like know this girl. But why is it? And like, why is it? You, and, the, and the main issue is that it's not even like, oh, I know that if I tell her, I would benefit their relationship because maybe she would like end it. It's like, oh, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't end it, and she would just like really not fuck with me or like twist it so it looks like I was like encouraging it. So then it's like mm. all those other repercussions, especially in the context of like, usually the woman who is the messenger is more punished than the guy who did it. In that context, it's like, well, damn, you're probably not even going to leave him anyway. And now we're not going to be friends. So I'm just going to avoid it. Do you know that from experience or is that just hearsay? I mean, it's hearsay, but like, what, so that's I mean, what, what like, I, do, I can't learn everything I can't learn everything firsthand I have to learn from the people around me and it's like that's what we generally understand and also it's like if I get the opinions of like my closest girlfriends also this wasn't a hypothetical that had anything to do with me I don't know why it's making it sound like really you, like, well, you, you brought up like, the personal the personal part well, like, and then I was wondering I mean like I just feel like it's a general topic that I'm curious about yeah but I think there's a lot of people that would stray more towards avoiding or ignoring it because they know that there's a very high chance someone would rather persecute them than hold the person accountable for the relationship, mm -hmm. which I find interesting because I know for me, like if I was with a dude and he was messing around with other girls, like in what world am I going to be mad at the girl, especially if they are honest with me, it would be like, well, thanks for letting me know, right. like goodbye. But there's a lot to the dude, but there's a lot of people that like, don't see it that way and I think we are growing out of that like I think firsthand now I don't see that super often but it's not like uncommon like the whole like oh I'm gonna beat her ass because she messed with my <laughs> men like that's that's a thing like it's not like I made it up like no I, I, you definitely didn't make I know it there's up. nuance you definitely huh? didn't make it up. So you definitely didn't make that up. That's definitely yeah, a real I didn't thing. Make that. We're talking like I'm like speaking from this universe where like it's all fine and dandy. Like, no, like there are women out here who will beat your ass if you are near their man, even if it was their man's fault. So like, you know what I mean? That That's a huge reason to not, I personally, I don't fight. Like I can't like, so <laughs> right. it's, it's not going to be me. Like, <laughs> I think it is different if it's, you know, in person, like, you know, both the people in real life versus Instagram, somebody's just DMing you. Do you think you would handle it differently versus like on online? Oh, well, from... I mean, when they are like complete, absolute strangers, I know like one time this dude DM me and I was like, I think I was trying, I mean, I was answering and then I was trying to figure out, um, I don't think he like let me follow his main page or something, which I obviously thought was weird as fuck because I'm like, what are you messaging me off of with like, anyways, it was all whack. So I was like, what's going on here? And he basically admitted that he had a girlfriend. And I was like, so then my plan was to find out what the girlfriend's name was. So I wasn't even like flirting with him. I was just like, oh, like, haha, like your girlfriend, like, and I was asking questions about the girlfriend because the second I had enough information, I was going to snitch, but right. he caught on. So he, he stopped talking to me. So my plan didn't work. And then I, I think I just blocked him. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, I, I guess it feels different because if you have zero connection, it's kind of like, but you are like blowing up someone's life. And I guess there are some people that are like, ignorance is bliss, I'd rather not know. And some people that are like, blow up my life so I can fix it. And some people that are like, blow up my life and I will come back and retaliate and blow up your life in some way. So it's just like, two out of those three odds are like, not really that good. That's you know? true. Well, what, what would you rather have happen to you in that situation? You're the girl. Oh, I would definitely rather know. 
You'd rather know. I would definitely. Rather I think know. most girls would rather know. I w- I would want to say that most girls won't beat your ass as the messenger. <laughs> I, most girls I know directly would probably rather know. Yeah, I feel yeah. like most people would know. It's like that's a natural thing. You don't want to be left in the dark. Somebody, you know, being sneaky behind yeah. your back. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like, if they're gonna stay anyway. I ignorance is bliss like that's like that also makes sense to me so would you want to (laughs) know I mean I definitely would because I don't like people making it seem like they're one way like oh yeah we're exclusive I'm not talking to anybody but versus just straight lying to you and behind your back doing it like that's some real shiesty shit I would not be cool with that yeah I definitely wouldn't want people know especially because then you look like a clown (laughs) because everybody else I know I know that's but that's That's why it pains me because I'm like it's that's why I was saying, like, it's not safe. Like, the streets aren't safe. The house isn't safe. The sidewalk's not safe. Just just don't the do anything. The house isn't just safe. mind your business. Because you will get in this relationship, and they will embarrass you. Like, they really will. Like, it's, ew. It's All gross. right, what, what percentage of men do you think are, are like that? What percentage of men are what? Are, are like that. The make you look like an idiot. <laughs> You know, oh. talking to girls behind your back. What percentage do you think? Obviously, Probably we're generalizing. Like 65. 65. More than half. Why do oh. you think why do you think that Definitely, is? Definitely, yeah. I don't know. I think all my evidence is anecdotal. Of course. But I just feel like more often than not, someone's man is embarrassing them than the other way around. You know what I mean? Like more often than not, they're out here embarrassing you. So based off of my anecdotal evidence so far, I would say like 65. And that's honestly me being generous. I was like, let me not be biased and say like 80. Like that's really good. <laughs> okay. There but what good people out there, even if I don't know them. Oh my gosh. So why do you think, no, I, I understand why you think that number, but I'm saying like, why do you think that men are acting that kind of way? Do you think it's, a cultural thing? Do you oh, think it's biological? What do you think? It's the Madonna whore complex. Have you heard about that? Mm-mm, what is it? I don't, like I said, I'm not the expert, but from my understanding, the Madonna whore complex has to do with like the dynamics with which men like categorize women based off of almost like a first impression. They kind of have it in their mind, whether you're like a Madonna or a whore. And so a whore is someone that you might be like sexually attracted to, but you wouldn't actually inherently respect. And then a Madonna is someone that you'd be like, oh, she's like wifey type. Like I would date her and all this stuff, but you wouldn't necessarily be sexually attracted to her because part of like putting her on that pedestal removes her sexuality from you. So her being more sexual would put her in the whore side, would make you, which would make you not like her, which is why people are confused whenever they're like, I'm the wifey type. So I don't know why he goes and cheats on me with like, sluts or whatever you know what I mean because it's like there's this dynamic going on where you can't have both and nobody really wins because the respect for the Madonna isn't actually respect it's just like they have a very idealized idea of like what a woman should behave like so you're working within all those constructs potentially not even being like your authentic self for the sake of being the wifey type, just to be cheated on with someone who's actually sexually attracted to, if he's cheating, not to say that it always happens. But I think that's where it kind of stems from. That's interesting. There's probably a lot of other things going on, but yeah. Because from my perspective, I think it is biological. Like I think men are programmed to be hyper sexual or I wouldn't say hyper but just more sexual and less attached to the sex where it's like oh wow I see this I want to have sex with it (laughs) I feel like no one can say that it is or not no one can say it's biological I'm sure you could like boil it back down and say that but at the same time we've never actually had like if, if if you do an experiment you have the like control and then you have the experiment itself We've never seen a situation where men and women aren't socialized to do the things they do. You know what I mean? Like, so we don't have a society where maybe we had a neighborhood and we had a society of men and women and they were all expected to enjoy whatever toys they liked 
or if they gravitated towards makeup, they could use it instead of like having their hands smacked if they're a boy. Mm-hmm. And like even heterosexuality and sexuality in general, like is pushed on kids from a very young age. Like the idea that little boys like will be around women, older women or younger women, and they'll be like, oh, he's gonna be like such a ladies' man. Like that's fucking weird. But that like really weird. people do that to kids. So it's like you don't you could say, oh, he was programmed to come out and wanna be like fuck like getting women all over the place, but you don't actually, you can't separate like nature versus nurture because we've never seen a situation where we just actually let nature decide if someone is going to be sexual. Because mm-hmm. it's very easy to, or not necessarily easy, but with like intentional parenting, you can parent your kids to not internalize so much of the stuff they see in the outside world that makes them turn out a certain way. Mm-hmm. So it's not impossible to raise a man that does see women as people and not objects you know what I mean or even the concept that not to say that all men do but I'm saying even the concept that like I talk to girls all the time and they're like yeah like when he has older sisters or when he has sisters like the chances of him being like a kind person to women or like being able to have platonic friendships without slyly expecting something more goes up like hugely just because he's been around women in a non-sexual context before right so now he's been socialized in a different way where he has women in his life that he's not especially when they're younger because it's like oh I know for like maybe for like older brothers it's like the girls can still end up just being like these precious like I have to take care of her I have to protect her boys are grimy like you know what I mean they've already Mm -hmm. had that before they had women enter their lives when they're the younger brother it's like you have women older than you that just hang out with you and like you have that caring relationship. And I feel like there is a difference. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Cause I, I have younger sisters and I feel like I, I'm, I'm not as the, oh, I have to take care of them. Cause I do feel like my parents did a good job raising all of us. So, but I do like hanging out with my sisters. Like they're actually funny. Not, I, I'm gonna, this is a hot take. This is not misogynistic, but not a lot of girls are funny in my, in my opinion. You can't say that's a like, oh, this is a hot, <laughs> like that's not a hot take if it's just like, a misogynistic opinion that is that misogynistic though yes it is because the number of men that think it makes sense to say that me saying men aren't funny and believing it which i do that would be a hot take because that is not what we're pushed to believe but men will swear up and down that women aren't funny and it's just not true but when they are and maybe men find certain things funny to each other and women find certain things funny to each other but to say a whole gender isn't funny because Every time a woman makes a joke, you don't laugh. Like that's your business. That's don't make that. Okay, make you're right. That, like, that is a gross take. generalization. Um, but no, you're you're right. I do want to go back though because I think isn't there something to you know you have one egg per month. Men have millions of sperm. Do you think there's any kind of? Because I don't even think it's an object thing. I don't think it's a oh I'm looking at women and they're an object to be used for my sexual gratification. I really think it's oh I'm having urge to act on this. And with somebody who's new, this genuine or a, a novel experience is more exciting or I miss that kind of novel uh, feeling of like, you know, I, I met someone new and we're about to do this, like the, the excitement. I really do think it's more of a, a animalistic urge versus I a- just, I can't speak on biology, but like I said before, like I really, cause even the way women are socialized even when we become more self-aware about the fact that we are literally programmed to think certain ways and be insecure about certain things and hyper fixate on like male validation and all these things and crave those things, it's even being aware of it doesn't prevent it because it's so ingrained because we've been raised on these ideas. So even the idea that like, oh, women, like when people are like, oh, well, if a man cheats, it's purely sexual because men don't get emotionally attached when they have sex, but women do. It's like, why do you think they do? It's because you told them their whole life they'd be worthless unless they had like a male partner validating them. Mm. So they naturally crave that validation from the men and they wouldn't put it in jeopardy as easily as a man would because he could just, anyway, there's so many, there's so many things. I'm actually really interested on that. On the validation part. Like, is that really something that is drilled into- Yeah, like compulsive heterosexuality where it's like, especially like from a queer, like a queer perspective, like the number of lesbians that hook up with men or date men for such a long time before realizing they're lesbian because they just power through 
the things that repulse them about men because they need like they still have that oh I was like men are supposed to like me like I'm supposed to like men I'm supposed to do this and get male validation and they end up sleeping with men that they don't even like and then they find out they're a lesbian like that's not super uncommon you know what I mean that's interesting I guess I never really under I never really saw or I don't see the like how is that validation I guess I would say pushed on young girls like how was like how does the that where does that is, idea come from male validation is not only pushed on women it's also extremely important to men like other men which mm. is why men will treat women shitty to look good to their boys or mm. they will choose to not be with women that they think would look bad to their boys even if they did like that woman mm -hmm. so it's not like it's a, a woman problem that oh like we're always thinking all the time like how can we be more attractive and likable to them everyone is always thinking about it when guys are like i want big muscles don't you hear this concept where guys like get big muscles and then they're like i realize that like you're catering to, they're catering to the male gaze it's men that care about the muscles more than the women they're like it's it's always right. men coming up to me and complimenting my six pack and like asking me to get on my gym routine like the girls don't care like the female gaze is like okay like we don't care about dad bods like we don't you know what i mean so it's like it's not just something that women are affected by it's something that we're all wondering like how can we get a man's attention and who's the most powerful man in the room and how can i get him to notice me and that's like a subconscious thing it's not like something you do on purpose do you think that it comes from almost like a learned insecurity or do we have to or or since we have to prove ourselves or or not having to stand out like where does that because if it's inherent to both genders then it seems like it's not sexually motivated like what is what do you think is the motivation behind that because i mean like well i think it's just like yeah if i had to guess it would just be how we're socialized which i say that for everything but like i do i mean most of the stuff we participate in the things we think we believe in i mean up to a certain age before you start like really crafting your own opinions or even the fact that like maybe as a young kid you're like they told me to do this and i disagree with it you reacting to stuff is still you going against hey Tega. huh no i don't sorry my sister walked in. um it's still you just like reacting to what you've been told sorry what was your question again i lost my chance i was asking about the so we were talking about how both genders kind of seek that validation from a male perspective i'm trying to figure out where does that come from is that some patriarchal shit but also oh yeah no no but it is because it's like men are the ones that are set up with the power and if you think about i know for women it's like think about when women were allowed to have their own credit cards or open up bank accounts or mm -hmm. do anything without their father's permission or their husband's permission right you know so it's like for a long time, I mean, it's still, um, what are they, what's that word for? It's still systemic, like it's mm -hmm. not gone away. Um, maybe not on the same scale it was for like our grandmothers and stuff, but it's like for a long time, it was like, you literally could not function without a man by your side. So you were gonna do anything to get a man by your side. That's why it was right. like a mother's biggest priority for her daughters was to make sure she marries someone with a brain and who has money. like because they knew how important it was to steer her the rest of her child's life who that daughter marries and that's mm -hmm. different for a man because he can like pave his own way and work the you know climb the ladder or get a job or do whatever it is and there's nuance to that too but that's why i would think it comes from, from a woman's perspective and then for men it's like you know that the people around you that hold power to affect your life and your position in society are going to be other men so you care more about their opinion than you would about a woman's opinion you know yes i think that makes sense on a surface level but i think for men it is uh i think it still boils back to wanting to get their pick of the litter when it comes to women and i think that we kind of understand that if men are looking at this man as oh yeah he's the leader or he's like a top dog whatever we want to call it that's going to be signaling to the women like oh wow other men think that this is the man so like i definitely would want to you know get with him that's where I think, because I, I honestly don't think a lot of men are looking for male validation. I think at the end of the day, we are looking for female validation because I know me personally, damn near almost everything I do, if I really trace back to what the motivation is, is because I want to be able to get the partner that I want. You know what I mean? Like, 
women are think about what drives let me not interrupt you i have a problem with doing that because i don't have a good attention span say no say say whatever you you were gonna say no because you know how like so i'll hear about like fat women's fat like larger women's perspective on like dating and it'll be like you hear their experiences and it's very similar where and i'm obviously generalizing for the sake of like us talking but it's Mm -hmm. like they end up being in these like secret relationships where they know that this guy like wants them and they know that this guy like wants to be with them but he can't bear the thought of publicly being around this woman and like Mm -hmm. taking her out and having his friends and family know that he's attracted to larger women and that's because the beauty standard says the woman he's going for should be thin you know i definitely feel that so he and so and what and it's like you don't want your boy seeing that you would end up with a woman that's large even if you really did like that woman and her largeness and so it's like what's preventing that other than the fact that you care about their someone's opinion and taking it away from like fat phobia it's like even like when people are slut shaming it's like she's not wifey type like she's been with everyone she's for the streets whatever the fuck and it's because like oh like i don't want my boy and i've spoken to boys about this where it's like i don't want my boys to see that i end up with a girl that like has gone with everyone like so they're looking for a girl that's been low key or untouched doesn't everybody all these dynamics to play but it's still them wanting to impress their boys because if they were in an isolated situation where they could be with that woman and no one would know they'd be happy to do it I think it, when it, with the impressing my boys, I think that's like a comfort level because it's like these are the people I spend a lot of time with. And so their opinions matter because I'm going to be hearing them often. And so I don't want to hear the, oh, dude, don't, you know, every every other every other sentence is, oh, your girl fucked half the team or blah, blah, blah. I do think there's a portion of that where it's just like I'm protecting or I'm I think it boils down to insecurity or maybe not insecurity, but I'm just I don't want to. I'd rather appease other people's judgment of me than just go with my own desires. I think that's kind of what I'm hearing. But that is still from a male's perspective. Because if I think of how women's relationships work, think of how, oh, like the number of conversations I've had with my women friends where we're all just like, girl, you know, this man is embarrassing you. Like, please leave him. Like, this does not look good. And it doesn't matter how much you drag this boy. She'd rather continue to get the validation from that man and be in that relationship then listen to the fact that this person is horrible to her and there could be a lot of other things going on like manipulation and within their relationship dynamic that makes it hard for her to leave but it's like it's important to the point where like even as kids where boys will like hit young girls and they'll be like oh he hits you because he likes you and it's like we're trained to put up with bullshit for the sake of a man liking us because that's so important (laughs) right and so when in so in a male's relationship you're like oh well like you know I might like this girl but I care that my boys don't make fun of me all the time if I'm going to spend time with them so I'm not going to be with her but for a girl it's like this boy likes me so I don't care if my friends drag me 24 7 the second I leave his house Mm -hmm. I'm going to be with him because he likes me and you see how that affects the priorities for both genders because at the end of the day like male validation is so important to both genders that's fascinating or I shouldn't say both genders obviously but you know what I mean yeah, that's really interesting. I wonder why, I wonder what, uh, so it is the male valid, it's the va- male validation. That's really crazy. I never, I never thought it had that big of an impact on women because just from what I see on social media, it sounds like y'all don't need no man and you don't care, <laughs> but it clearly well, that's just posturing. <laughs> to no, extent. like that's what I said earlier is like, you can, and I think for me too, like, especially growing up as like a black woman like a darker skinned woman around like white people and conservative like Nigerian parents so it's like they've been telling me shit that didn't make sense about the way that I live my life naturally since I was born to the point where I'm already coming out the womb like questioning everything so then as you get older you ask more questions you learn more about this stuff and even being aware of it doesn't necessarily prevent it from happening to me directly can you give me an example? Maybe one that's not the male validation, but it can be. Just any kind of example where you're like, this makes no sense. This is archaic. Um, um oh, what do you mean? Like just stuff well, that they like dress codes. Okay, like, give me, give I don't me know, example. diet culture, like there's a lot of things. 
What do you mean? Because you were saying like, all right, from my parents and then growing up with white people, I've been kind of getting this idea that. Just, I, just hearing things don't that don't make sense. make sense. Like if I'm, if I'm at school and I'm like hanging out with friends or like talking in class and just like being normal, people want to call you sassy all the time, even mm. though you know you're exactly the same as your white best friend and no one's ever called her sassy before. Mm -hmm. Or people want to say that I'm intimidating, even though I know that I'm exactly like my best friend who's white and no one's called her intimidating before but i'm right. the intimidating one because i'm the black one or going mm -hmm. to school and it's like you're a taller black woman with curves so i can be within the dress code and still have people calling my parents being like why is she wearing that outfit to school? so first of all so like colorism let's give a very what you're talking example. about so at my school we didn't have like a uniform per se this was my school from like 10th to 12th grade okay. so you could wear like any solid colored paired pants a turtleneck or a collared shirt, or you could wear dresses, like mm -hmm. if you're a girl, basically. So when I started like actually wanting to dress up for school and like wear my clothes, because I would never go out because my parents wouldn't let me, I would wear like dresses to school. And they would constantly be dress coding me in these dresses because it's like, I, like I have like bigger boobs, I'm a black girl. So you're already immediately like hypersexualized around all these white girls with like less form necessarily mm -hmm. and it was just like you're, you're just hearing this and you're like this doesn't make any sense because i know i'm in the dress code so then they changed the dress code they're like no t-shirt dresses i swear to god they made that up because i wore t-shirt dress. dresses like people like that's not t-shirt dresses don't even have form to them they're loose dresses they banned them are you so talking I about like a, wearing like a big like an xl yes, t a oversized t-shirt that is the length of a dress they banned them they didn't, none of the teachers even knew what it meant when they banned it. It was a targeted offense, honestly. And so then I started wearing like pants. I would wear like high-waisted, like solid colored jeans or whatever, because we were allowed to wear that. And I'd wear like turtleneck tops. And they would call my mom and like tell her that I was like not abiding to the laws of the uniform, even though I was in the uniform because my clothes were tight fitting or not tight fitting, but like, like would fit, like you could see what I looked like. And it's like, you can see what these other girls look like. So why aren't you calling their parents? You know what right. I mean? That doesn't make sense. So. How would your know. parents respond to that? Cause it sounds, that's just real, that's just like classic colorism there. And, and also where did you grow up? Like, where was this? Um, this was happening in the Woodlands, Texas. Texas. So okay. like near Houston. Okay. But my, I mean, they would, it would depend on what they'd say. like. I don't think my parents ever necessarily like made me change, but I mean, I would wear over the knee boots to school and my mom would be talking about like, I mean, they use this term way too loosely here, but they'd be like, she'd be like, you look like a hooker. You look like a prostitute oh my God. because I'm wearing over the knee boots. Like I'm not even like going out in my underwear. I'm literally wearing boots that go over my knees. And that is so associated with a particular type of woman in your That's head crazy. that you're calling your 16 year old daughter a prostitute before she goes to school. But she let me go to school, fortunately, because she had yeah. to get over it because I kept buying them. And then my dad was like, my, my dad, when it was like clear that I was obviously in the uniform and not breaking it in any way he's mm -hmm. just like she looks good so it doesn't matter but he likes to be more progressive than my mom is to like be special nice. so yeah that's funny i really i i think that's a that's an experience that a lot of people have had the uh, being treated differently in a school all white people i think that's universal but yeah, I mean, at least your parents at least your parents were kind of more supportive i mean maybe your mom with the boots but I will say though the t-shirt dress maybe they banned it because it looks like you don't have pants on or would you wear like longer pants no like and that was another problem it's like if you're a taller girl who has like longer legs then it's like every dress you wear is going to be a problem should I wear like an extra extra large thing that doesn't fit me because I have long legs if I'm a size small like you know what right. I mean like yeah it's just like why should I be going out of my way when I could be wearing normal clothes like every other girl and you could just stop fucking staring at me. Like, right. And teaching I was gonna say, has nothing to do with my legs. So it's like, I don't know why it, you can't teach your class with my legs underneath the table. Like, it's right. weird to me. Because it seems like they're making rules for the boys. Like, oh yeah, we don't want no, the, and that's the men exactly to be distracted. Like, wow, that is kind of crazy. And I, I think no, that's yeah. a portion of why, of almost like hypersexualizing it because we're making it such a big deal about everything. Like, I don't yes. think anybody would it wouldn't be a big deal if we didn't make it a big deal. I like just let people do what they're going to do. Obviously, we have to have maybe some rules, but we, we don't need to be picking and choosing how we enforce them, yes. especially not making it a super big deal. Like, I think it's a big like deal. that makes strapless it... tops or like spaghetti tops. The idea oh, that you yeah, think a man that. is going to like 
<laughs> what come in his pants because he saw her shoulders in the middle right. of the house. Like it's weird. <laughs> that is weird. It's just weird. And like past societies, women going around topless and like boobs just weren't sexualized in those societies, and women were more respected in those societies than we are now when we're under like more control in terms of like what we should or should not be wearing. It's just like very strange. That is a really interesting concept because it's like you hide the things because you know you want to be modest, but then almost like hiding it makes like raises the the desire for it because it's like you can't it's like people want what they can't have or they can't immediately exactly. see. So that you're that's making really it seem like this like highly prized right. thing. Like what's she hiding under there? Like it's yeah. creepy. It is creepy. How do you do you think we can counter that? Do you think we're doomed forever to be? think we're doomed forever i just think it's unfortunate like how slowly it moves i already know it's things that used to be a bigger deal when i was younger are changing a lot already Mm -hmm. and i'm only like what like 22 now but it's just not moving fast enough but i'm just impatient right i definitely think it's moving fast too because when i was younger say like high school middle school girls were not on instagram shaking ass like they are now and now it seems like it's pretty much accepted so i don't know what do you what do you have you felt that same perspective because i felt like before it was like oh you like you don't want to turn around for pictures and and now it seems like it's been more like it's just normal now have you seen that too i feel like social media like helps because you can participate in things within your own home kind of Mm-hmm. And then it kind of like lets you normalize things that people used to hypersexualize, but then all these people are seeing it on the internet all the time. And you're like, what's wrong with her dancing? And there right. isn't anything wrong with her dancing and there never was, right. but I think seeing it in a widespread way helps a lot. Or even things to do with like colorism and the beauty standard, people are realizing a lot more how connected it is to blackness, especially, and like how, beauty trends phasing it out to do with like women's bodies in a problematic way um and even just like black girls growing up thinking they're beautiful because they've seen so many like publicly validated beautiful black women on the on social media and Mm -hmm. they're like oh well like you know she kind of looks like me like maybe i'm cute like and that's very different than when i was younger like and that wasn't that long ago so (laughs) Yeah, I think yeah. there is hope. There definitely is hope. We're making progress in the right directions, but it is going to take time. I think it is up to us when it comes to raising the next generation of setting those standards and not let, not, not letting them take shit for things that we took shit and we knew it didn't make sense. I think we have to be a little bit more aggressive. Like, hey, the buck is going to stop here. We're not going to be pushing these kind of things on our kids. What do you think about that? Yeah. Agree. What do you think? I, I'm I'm trying to figure out what that bimbofication thing was because you were talking about starting a TikTok and I had never heard that word before. Can you kind of illuminate? Is this related oh, to what we're talking no. about? Oh no, I was saying I saw it on TikTok and bimbofication. I, I don't fully understand it. There's this like one particular TikTok creator who basically used, I think, used these methods to get over her very like narcissistic relationship with her Mm ex-boyfriend but she like calls it bimbofication but it's like some of them are just like probably what therapists would recommend you use to get out of an abusive narcissistic relationship so it's like a silly name but very real methods that are like good for boosting confidence and like just not taking things personally because you know that it has more to do with that person and like the things that they're going through than it does with like the things they say to be harmful towards you. I don't fully understand it. I just wanted to see if anyone had like heard of it to see how widespread it was, you know? Is it like thought exercises? Is it like I'm taking pictures? Like what, it, what exactly is it? It's no, it's like, it's like a mindset. Okay. It's definitely like a mindset. It's like, okay, like if he wants to like, if people want to hurl insults at me, like I know that has more to do with like them them and their issues than it has to do with anything that's actually wrong with me. So I'm just gonna like ignore it and like almost like being like ditzy and like ha ha ha. But it's actually like good because it's like, you shouldn't be taking those things to heart. They don't have anything to do with you. That's just like one example that I remember. Okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, The name is weird, but I feel like a lot of those, that kind of principle can apply to everyone because most of the time when people are saying mean things to you, it's not about you. A lot of times they're projecting their insecurities onto you or they notice them in you and that's why they're calling it out because they haven't dealt Mm. with it in themselves. That's interesting. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to start the TikTok or what? (laughs) No, I have a TikTok. I was saying I'd, I'd seen it on my TikTok. 
Oh, okay. I thought that was going to be your niece going in. No, no. I I don't know enough about it to make it my niche. Oh, okay. I want to talk about um, like monogamy. Do you think it works? Do you think it's an issue? What do you think? Because we were talking, it seems like if we didn't have these preconceived notions that you have to be with one person, that a lot of the issues that we run into would be averted. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I think also the fact that like, so monogamy is like the standard, mm -hmm. but then the way we expect men and women to participate in relationships and interact with one another in relationships, it's usually at the downfall of a woman's mental health than it is a man's. So mm -hmm. I think there's statistics on it in terms of like married relationships, the men are usually like substantially happier than the women. Really? Um, so it's like, we, I mean, we are expected to love unconditionally, like love men and love children unconditionally and provide for our spouses and like overexert ourselves to care for others. And that's when we become like meaningful participants in society. You know, where it's like, oh, like she was a mom, like she was a wife, but it's like, no, she's like a person. So like, don't do shitty things to other people um, and stuff like that. So it's like, men are not like expected to do the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, like when men like start making money, it's like, oh, now who can I get instead? Who's better than my wife right now? Cause that's what I could get when I was on that level. I'm on a better level now. Like I need to switch up. Like women don't think that, like women aren't socialized to think that way. They might, but like, they're not socialized to think that way. Or um, I don't know. So it's just like, there's the way that we are expected to function in romantic relationships with one another. It's not really in women's favor a lot of the times. But wouldn't you say women are already aiming for the top? So there is no like, oh, I made, I got to money. Now I'm going to get the man I want. It's more like I'm already looking for the man I want. And then even when it comes to like loving unconditionally, isn't like there's a lot of conditions that need met before I can give you my love. Don't you feel like that's kind of- The thing is women are a lot more of like, when it, when it comes to like being considered shallow, the things that men have on their checklist that they have demands for and the partner that they would like cuff are not considered shallow to the extent where it is like for a girl. Like we, more often than not, we're expecting women to settle, especially like black women. It's like, oh, why do you think you deserve all that? Like, what do you bring to the table? And it's like, why do you assume that, first of all, every, like why is everything so transactional? Right. Um, but I don't know. I mean, monogamy can work. I've seen it work. My parents are like happily married. It's right. just like, Same. it's not like I'm, it, and it's just like, I think I've also just been reading a lot about it and hearing more about like a, a married woman's experience, like life experiences. And they're just like not happy. And I'm like, this is like a scam because they act like all you want <laughs> is like to be engaged and like do the wedding and like, be living happily ever after and then these women are literally miserable and like unloved and like unwanted in their relationships and they just stagnate and their partners are unaware that they're not providing enough for them emotionally um to the point where like when they finally reach their breaking point after what they've thought was like communicating their needs all of them being unmet then it's like the man is like shocked like i can't believe it. it's just like but it's like they have no idea how to do like they've not been socialized to care about other like a woman's opinion <laughs> and like treating her well and that's obviously like a huge generalization because some guys do care and some people are great partners i just think there's so much that goes into monogamy that's like wrapped up in possession and jealousy and expectations for like love that aren't matched mm -hmm. where people are not getting their needs reciprocated and like met by their partner Mm -hmm. But then you want to be in a relationship so bad. So you don't want to end up the single lonely person. So you just put up with nonsense. Right. I definitely, I definitely feel that. Do you think you could share a man with somebody else? Um, I wouldn't describe it like that. Well, all right, I wouldn't, okay. We don't have to describe it like that, but let's say. I, I think I could be open. Like, I think I could do whatever he could do whatever. And like, we could be our, like, do our thing too. If that makes sense. Like, okay. I think I could be in an open relationship, but I wouldn't be like sister wives for this one man. Cause I mean, 
like why the not? man is god i don't really know why he needs two of us and i should like sit at home and only worship him like that's weird yeah. <laughs> well what I'm, I'm saying like you, it could be open but there's just like he's just married to two of y'all so yeah you can do your thing and like she she can too but like you guys have the same husband no no why wait i don't i don't understand why you're not describing an open relationship you're saying if two people were married to the same husband yeah like what's, what's wrong with that but you you can still like if you no because to, why would you both be married like what because it's like if we're talking about poly it's like hey not every man is gonna have the capabilities to meet your needs say you meet the same you meet somebody they're amazing everything's great you want to get with them? They're already married, but he's she's cool with him marrying somebody else. You're when cool I with it. Comments on monogamy. I'm not talking about what I would do. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just yeah, okay. saying. I'm just pointing out the plot holes in this like very nicely dressed up concept of monogamy. There okay. are a lot of plot holes in the fiction they try to sell us about being in a monogamous relationship. Not to say that I would first like. I just my ick for how men behave initially when you even describe that happening I'm like in what world would that make sense I could be open where like we're in a committed relationship but you might do non-emotional things with other people and I might too because that's another plot hole with monogamy is this assumption that you will never be attracted to anyone else that's just not true but I don't see why I would be emotionally committing to someone who's also emotionally committing to someone else now polyamory is obviously a thing so some people would do it if it was me with a man, I'm not doing that. Unless like I also liked the woman and it was like right. a three-way equal relationship. But that's just me. Someone else might be open to it, but. Okay. No, that's interesting because I've had friends that said the same thing. It's like, I don't want to, and this is from a female perspective. Like, I don't like, I don't want to be a cheater, but like, I do like, you know, I just want to do stuff with other people. Not that I want to get with them, like, and be with them, but it's just like a one night stand or like, you know, a exactly. kind of thing. I'm trying and I think to... that's a very normal urge that right. ends up stifling monogamous relationships. Either someone cheats or they don't cheat and they spend their time wishing they could. Fact. And either way, it still like affects the relationship. So I think kind of how you were talking about monogamy as ownership. I think we do have to get away from the ego, egotistical, like this is mine. Like I, I kind of have domain over this person and their body. I feel like if we can get away from that it might be possible to have open relationships, but I can't see most men being cool with other men having sex with their wife for the most part, at least just people I know. That's the only issue in it because I would say like, because I think I try to think of my, my, my own perspective. Like I would obviously want, say I'm in a relationship, open relationship. I would want my, like in theory, it sounds good. Like I want my woman to be able to do, you know, whatever I'm doing. Like there's no difference between her and me, except genitalia like but at the same time i just have a really weird feeling about somebody else having sex with my wife or girlfriend or whoever it is even if i have the freedom to do what i want to do and i don't know why that is well there's a lot of girls that feel that way too which is why they also wouldn't do it right but at the same time (laughs) but it's just like i i don't know it's it's weird because i i can't imagine most men being cool with the the woman's perspective but i feel like most women would be cool like, oh yeah you know he does whatever and comes home because i think that's just been normalized so i think it is just a, a i think a lot of girls would be okay with that at all actually you don't think so no definitely not not even maybe maybe not for all types of men but like if everything else is straight like you know the kids everything the kids are good well you know, are you the... saying like if they could also do whatever i still think there's a lot of most girls would rather not not being in some a relationship like that no yeah I, I agree with that but I do think there's a because when they, when they talk about monogamy it's like oh that's for men because now every man can get a wife but if it was poly it'd be like most of the women are going for you know the higher uh status or the more the the, the top of the pyramid I, I would say for men I kind of agree with that I do feel like because it's like why would you deal with somebody who's not as who can't provide the the certain lifestyle that you want versus somebody who can you know what i mean and if poly was more accepted but but when you describe it when you describe it as like two women married to one man 
it doesn't really feel like polyamory for the woman because polyamory would be the idea that like she's also in a relationship with other men at the same time because she likes him for different reasons because you said like you said maybe he doesn't provide for her in every way that she would like so it'd be like you're emotionally like emotional relationship with different people is that what it is i'm trying to because I, I, mean, thinking... I don't fully know everything but i'm saying like the same way monogamy would work, you'd have that depth of a relationship with potentially more than one person. Maybe there'd be different dynamics within your different relationships. Mm. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I'm, we're coming up on an hour. I, did you have anything like, any, anything else you wanted to, to talk about? I feel like we kind of ran the gamut on the dating. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm good on anything. If you had any other questions, we can talk about it. But yeah, I, I don't have much else to add. Okay, I want to transition to, I have a lot of Nigerian friends and I've always been fascinated with the money throwing at the weddings. What's what's up with all that? Like, I think that's so cool, but what oh. is, what's up with that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I only lived here for like two years or like less than two years, I think as a kid. And okay. then we moved back a couple years ago. So I, I like come on the holidays. So we don't really know that many people, but it doesn't like, it only, it doesn't feel weird to me. Like it's definitely like a normal thing people do. It's like, I don't think if it's you weird go either. to a function, like if you're, if you even have like family friends come over, they're kind of expected to give the kids money if you go to functions they're like spraying people with money it's just like something they do i think that's cool but i, I can see how it's strange from an like a non-nigerian perspective if you're used to like strippers getting money in that <laughs> no but it's not even it's a, like it's, definitely not weird yeah i don't it's not i wasn't asking from a weird perspective i was asking for a like what was the like how did it start i guess because it's, it's like i think it's really cool i would love to to start doing that too just throwing throwing money at my friends functions like a baby shower just throwing money i thought that's really cool i don't know if maybe it came from like just giving or like a sense of generosity or or what i didn't know if there was any kind of like cultural relevance behind it or if you... i would assume it's a generosity thing i honestly don't know i might have to ask my parents about that after this because it almost <laughs> it's almost like a battle <laughs> like a battle like oh yeah i'm gonna throw more money at my daughter's wedding than the groom or or, or something like that you know what I mean? like the groom's family like oh i'm about to yeah <laughs> i think it's just part of the celebration yeah i think that's dope i think that's something that we should do in america <laughs> celebrating you at can least always the, say they should do it at your wedding if that's what you want tell people to bring the maybe i will maybe i will because everybody needs to yeah. bring a thousand dollars to throw it's gonna be like a, a snowball fight with money that's yeah funny. exactly all right well obi i really appreciate you or abby i appreciate you taking the time very enlightening conversation i'll let you know when i post it okay okay yeah thanks for having me all right have a great rest of your day happy new year it's, it's the first of the, the new year you got big yeah, plans happy new year. big plans this year or what no i mean i think i'm gonna go to this like hotel rooftop that's my current plan <laughs> okay sweet. Yeah, and where can people call you? you on oh i'm not doing anything i'm chilling right now i'm yeah. in miami live my best life but it's just chilling mm -hmm. where can people follow you on socials though right my instagram is 14 underscore obby so o-b-i-e and then my TikTok is at Liv Lumani. So L I V E L U M A N I. Dope. All right. Well, <laughs> again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of the year, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.